Uh, Ryan, your ears are about to perk up because we're going to talk rookies, okay? So mm-hmm. we know who the Calder favorites are. I was saying to Ryan in the office earlier today, I think it's a pretty set quartet. It's the Hughes brothers in there. Kale McCarr is in there, of course. And the, the other one is Capococco, of course. Uh, and after that, there's sort of a gap. So I want to talk about the, the rest of that group and, and sort of Calder sleepers. Uh, so, Ryan, we'll start with you. Who's your dark horse to win the Calder Trophy? All right. Uh, this is one where I'm very intrigued by Tobias Bjornfoot in Los Angeles. This is a kid that was just drafted this summer, you know, late in the first round by the Kings, and made the team, made a lot of fans along the way. I know Drew Doughty thinks the world of the kid. He loves mm-hmm. his poise. And what's interesting about Tobias Bjornfoot is that he's not a super flashy kid by any stretch of the imagination. Like, he's not one of those darting Eric Brandstrom types. He's not huge, uh, you know, like he's not like a big guy like Philip Roberg, but he's just really solid. He's a good two-way player, no fuss to his game, and he's a leader. He's worn a letter internationally for Sweden already. And on that Kings team, which we don't think is going to be very good, there is a lot of opportunity, and I think that's very interesting. I think Bjornfoot, I mean, if he can get a nice role there, I'm not saying that he's going to get a lot of points, and the Calder tends to go to a player with a lot of points, but I think he can have a nice role there where he could play some solid minutes. I mean, they could still send him back to Sweden for all we know, but he would be my dark horse because I see a lot of potential there that can be realized now. He doesn't have to grow into anything. <clears throat> What about you, Kenny Boy? Who's your dark horse? Well, I'm looking at Carter Verhage in uh, in Tampa. Um, I mean, just by virtue of the fact that he made the team, and he's going to be, he's going to be on the third line. It looks like with my other favorite player, Yanni Gord. Yanni Gord. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, I think here's a guy like he's 24 years old. He's got a lot of pro experience. He won the scoring title in the American League last year. And some guys, it takes them a little longer to get ready to play in the NHL. Now, I'm not saying he's going to be a star in the league long term, but he just appears to be the kind of guy that's in the kind of situation where he might be able to make something happen. And you never know. He maybe moves up the lineup a bit if if there's an injury. He gets a bit of power play time. He's on a team that's going to score a lot. So I, I think I think the table's set quite nicely for him. Mm-hmm. And we know there's a history with Tampa of just finding those diamonds in the rough with right. Ronnie Gord and Tyler Johnson. This is one of the best farm systems in the league, consistently turning guys that are overlooked into legitimate, not just like grinders, yeah. actual legitimate, like high-scoring NHL forwards. Yeah, this really? guy wasn't overlooked, though. He was drafted by the Toronto Maple Leafs. Mm-hmm. He was yeah. a draft. But he's not like he was a first-round pick. No, know? no, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. He slipped through the cracks, right, exactly. Right, right. Uh, the guy that I'm going to pick from my dark horse, I just can't. I, I, every time I just look at the you know preseason stories and just sort of following who's generating the buzz, I get more and more excited about this guy, Victor Olofsson. Mm. And mm. he's fascinating because he doesn't, I'm going to write about this actually later today, he doesn't check the typical rookie boxes. It's not like he's a first-round pick. In our Future Watch magazine last year, he was Buffalo's number seven prospect. Yeah. A year ago, he's 24 years old. Yeah, I believe this was his 17th training camp. With yeah, Buffalo. probably, right? <laughs> and But he sort of just gradually crept his way up the system. And a couple yeah. of years ago, he leads the Swedish league in goals. Last year he goes to the AHL and he rips like 30 goals in 60 games, give or take. Gets a couple with the Sabres as well. And Ralph Kruger, the new coach, really impressed with him. He's got a really good shot. Every time I read anything or watch him or hear anything about Victor Olfsson, there's just rave reviews about his shot. And here we are. He's going to open the season on the left wing with Jack Eichel and Sam Reinhardt. He's being demoted, I know, on paper, but it's just a right. cat move. He's going to be on the team to start the season. And to me... Especially if you look at like Hughes and Kako, the other forwards, Cody Glass, guys like that, they're really exciting rookies, but they're more likely to be playmakers in terms of their goal scoring mm-hmm. to assist ratio. Yeah. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I actually think Victor Olsen is a legit dark horse to lead all rookies in goals this year. Ooh. That's my guy. 